Uh, yeah, I, I am. I'm still taking it in right now. Um, yeah, the. Sorry, I'm a little lost for words. Um, yeah, I really trust. Uh, you know, this one is like built off previous championships because we've just learned how to teach this game over and over again. And I think uh, I think it would be impossible today to have them execute if we just. And we just, you know, hadn't learned in years past, like, what this comes down to. Um, and so I, I really, am, as much as I'm enjoying this victory, I'm thinking that it's not possible without uh, the other victories before it. <laughs> um, what was your process in finding out the result? Were you watching the scores go back and forth? How did that happen? <clears throat> yeah, we were... Uh, we were watching the scores go back and forth. We actually, we actually felt really good about it, no matter what, because we just knew they'd executed a really great team race. Uh, and so I'm like, you know, first, second, I. It, one of the dangers when you just really downplay winning so much is that, if, you know, you try not to take the defeats too hard, but you also try not to take the wins too much either. And so I just knew we'd had a great team race, um, and uh, I felt great about that. I couldn't wait to find them. I couldn't wait to see the guys and uh, and just celebrate that whether we're second. Um, and then you see, the, then you see the tiebreaker, and I, I did my math on the tiebreaker. I thought we were okay, but you know, then there's a protest. So, yeah, I lost about ten years off my life in the uh, in that ten minutes at the line trying to sort out the sort out the results, but it worked in our favor. What was the protest over? Uh, you know, they, um, the 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 finish line where the the line where the chip is and the actual measured finish line are not the same line. They're across. They're separated by a couple of inches, and so. Uh, you got to make sure that the way the rule is written, you got to make sure that the body actually gets in front and it's not just the chip. So, yeah, cross country coach uh, stuff. Which is the line that matters? The actual finish line or the chip? The finish, line? The finish line is actually before. Uh, it's a, and so about, about six inches later. So, if someone's body actually gets over it, but then the changes by the chip, it, anyway. So, you got you to gotta sort that stuff out of the finish line. And it's finalized? It's though? finalized. Yeah. Okay. You work on leaning with the team. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's wild. It, uh, it looks like the tiebreaker came down to George uh, George Kusher, so, um, who's a guy who struggled for us all season. And, you know, this is like the equivalent, you know, you're, you're in your driveway shooting hoops, practicing, uh, you know, winning the NBA finals with a buzzer beater. It has, this is the equivalent of that in cross country. And in a program that you're, when you're always teaching that every everyone matters and every place matters, to win a national championship on a tiebreaker is like, yeah, now, now they'll finally listen to us when we're... Uh, Drilling that into their head over and over. So Bosley and Nico looking off a lot like Dave and Max. Did you pull from that game plan? Yeah, the, that race plan is gas, 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 and um, you know we we use the the data from the championships two championships ago at Oklahoma State to learn how to race this race. We knew that if we stretched out the front, we were going to position those guys far enough out. Um, so that was, uh, you know, that data proved really fruitful today. Uh, we were going to pull those guys away, and even if uh, they fell off the front, the worst they're going to finish is, you know, second, third, something like that. So when you're looking at team points through two, you know, we were going to have within five points, I thought, um, and that's what we needed to secure. So the guys, uh, you know, three, four, five, six, seven could could do their jobs. It looked like it seemed achievable coming off of the call and a lot of guys finishing the hundreds in a race that was basically three nets here, yeah. and now they're finishing the top forty. That doesn't happen typically. What yeah. happened in that one span to go from the nutty performance to this performance? <clears throat> yeah, I, I screwed up in the um, I screwed up in the middle of the season, and I just uh, I, I I just had didn't have their legs underneath them in the middle of the season. I made some mistakes in training, and uh, that was that was on me. Um, and so they just had to, they just had to suffer through that uh, and get their get their butts kicked at, at nutty comb and um, but. You know, the cool thing about our sport, right, is like, you know, if you could, as long as they just don't lose hope and they just keep, they just stay with it, you know, they get to see how the season turns out. And uh, I just kept telling the locker room, like, this is, we're, we're actually, we're actually good. We're in a great place. I, I knew this is as strong a team as we've ever had. And, you know, I research our competition well, but um, a lot of people don't have experience doing it on this day. And I think if you look at the results, um, it's hard to execute on this day. So fortunately, it's not one of the Nutty Comb Invitational. Um, and we just had to make sure they kept believing that. Santiago Prosa had like a huge day for you guys today. Like, did you expect he could finish that high up? How did he get to this point where he's going to win the title? Man, there's always a guy, there's always a guy, that, there's always a guy in whether this meet that, you know, uh, makes me remember, you know, why, why I want to be a coach. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a guy who's just worked through a lot of, you know, conquered a lot of fear um and uh yeah had to 
Um, yeah, had to had to face a lot to get here, and uh, he, he he executed in a huge way for us. So proud of him. Yeah. To be honest, what were your thoughts on the the tiebreaker rule? It's broken by head-to-head yeah. head and not by sixth man. Before this meet, did you think that's the right way to break ties? Oh man, I've gone back and forth. I mean, I I, I love the I love the sixth man and the tiebreaker, and I I'm used to that. <laughs> I'll say that that wouldn't have uh, that would not have. Uh, uh, we would have lost, lost today based on the on that uh, way of scoring. So I'll go ahead and say that I love the head-to-head tiebreaker. <laughs> was, the, was the feeling, the mood different, like coming into championship versus the last six or seven, just because the regular season was so different? Um, I, I think for our guys that you know they had a lot more uncertainty heading into this. We got nice momentum at the conference and regional meet, and you know it's you, you're always asking them to trust their coaches, and you know I. I I was asking them to put a lot of trust into us, and, and you know it, we um, we had a meeting about a week ago. We had our big our big meeting on this about a week ago, and I started off by saying, "Hey guys, you, this is when you need to trust me. I've done this a million times. You just need to you need to trust what I'm telling you." But you know, I think when you don't have those race results for early season, there's a lot of uncertainty, you know, for sure. And so I, I I give it to them for staying with it and seeing the season through. Guys, can you describe what the process was of finding out you were the champions? How that played out for you guys? Uh, there's a lot of back and forth. Uh, I would say that, you know, we knew that it was within a point, but initially we thought we got second. We were still even proud of that result because, you know, we executed on the day and we were happy with that. And then it just uh, came down that we were tied and then the, we had won the tiebreaker and then we kind of had a lot of back and forth for about five minutes. And it was kind of stressful, but we were happy either way. So The past six championships, <laughs> NAU has been the favorite going in. This was the first time you guys weren't considered the favorite, even though you're the defending champs. Did that change your mindset at all, coming in here kind of a little, almost like an underdog, even though you had one for the past five? No, no not really. We go out there, we, ex- we try to execute every time. We, we ignore the outside noise, uh, which I guess is you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we ignore what everyone else says, and uh, we focus on our group, we focus on our guys, our coaches, and we drown everything else out. Um, and so, yeah, we didn't really notice, but yeah, cheers. Nico and Drew, did you guys watch the 2017 NCAAs with Tyler and Matt to kind of replicate the gas, gas, gas? Um, Talked about, what was that? Did you feel like you were just doing 2017 all over again? Yeah, sort of. I mean, we've all watched that race. So, I mean, um, I definitely got that feeling when uh, we were running it together. Yeah. Uh, Nico had a little more set in stone game plan, and I kind of, Coach Smith, like kind of left it like a blank canvas for me. I knew I was going anyway. Like I, I, I knew I already knew that going. Um, we did it similar to Matt and Chile. We're just a little better looking than them. So, yeah. were you guys aware of the the team score throughout the race, and how did that guys affect you when you realize, well, we're in the lead through two k through three k, and you know there's not just one team with us. There's Stanford and BYU and Oklahoma State. Well, we had kind of planned on the fact that, you know, based on what Nico's race plan was, that we would end up having kind of tighter team scores at the very beginning. And we knew that near 5K team scores tend to not change as much on a course like this. And so we kind of like, we were expecting to get to 5K and have a better idea of what was going on. And, you know, we could hear some people yelling and, you know, kind of stuff like that, but it didn't really, uh, it didn't really indicate quite how close it was until we crossed the line, I'd say. Did, did Nico, you, oh, go ahead. Nico, how good did it feel out there today, just battling with Charles Six? Because you guys just went at it today. It was that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean that having like that be a battle definitely um, made it faster. It was very very hard. Um, it was uh, yeah, it was a grind, but it was uh, yeah, it was really good. And Drew, same thing for you. You were in that mix for the, for the majority of that race. Yeah, I uh, the second half of that race, I had so many times. I had invitations to check out. I had so many times to to let myself slip, and every single time I felt that I put my head down and and stayed right with Nico. And that, that's the only only game plan. He's my teammate. I stay with him. And uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm proud of the way we ran that. I know all of us. Every single person that lined up had those invitations to check out, invitations to to slip off for 30 seconds. And every time we had that, I know I know damn well that all of us stayed on it, and we stayed the constant. That that was our motto coming in. Like. The, o- the only thing we can do is stay the constant. Every hill, the last part, just you stay the same, you stay the same, and the hill's gonna give up. You stay the same, you stay the same, and you're gonna feel like you're moving forward because you're staying the same. Um, that was my only thoughts. I, I saw Nico's sh- shoulders in the last, and-, and when I could, I was trying to help out too um, and push the pace. I was trying to be gutsy, and yeah, I mean, I, I, was, trying to, I was trying to help him out. I was trying to 
uh, Charles is a great athlete. I was trying to throw him off his game too. Like when he would come to the go to the front, you know, I would I I try to throw jabs too. Like we were, we were working together well, and um, yeah, it was we executed that well. Nico and I executed that. Nico, how did the how did the team race influence? your resolve individually because a lot of times like if you're an elite runner but you can win a team the coach wants you to like hold back a little so you don't blow up but for you guys it's almost the opposite yeah, I, you know northern arizona needed you to be you know first three guys yeah i think in this case it definitely played to our advantage to have um this happen and um i mean uh just Based on um, what Drew and I have done this season, we knew we weren't going to blow up. Um, there was going to be no drastic changes at the end of the race, so it was uh, the best option, I think, for our entire team. Yeah. After you guys got beat at Nuttycomb, did any of you guys doubt whether you'd be able to get it done you know, end of the season? No. no absolutely not. <laughs> you know, I, I think kind of speaking to the idea of what Drew was saying about being the constant, it's like, you know, like, uh, we, we knew what was really going on. We had our ideas of what had happened that day. and. We weren't that stressed and uh, people looked into it and you know they read into things that we probably didn't feel like were being re needed to be read into and we just moved on with our day and moved on to conference. Yeah. George, George, if you look at your two races here before this one, one when we were running for Nebraska and one at Cowboy Jamboree, wasn't the best, but here you finished All-American. What was different about today compared to the times before you were running on the scoreboard? You know, um, Gordon, I have to thank you for providing inspirational messages <laughs> throughout the season. Um, it really helped me to, uh, to get through the season. Um, in terms of what's different, uh, you know, 10K is a long way from me, uh, and it's always tough, but the difference is at NAU is you're not running for yourself, you're running for the whole team. And uh, at 8K, when it gets really hard, you know, you got, you got 19 guys, right? however, however many guys you run for, and it's, uh, it's really special. Uh, Santiago, I don't think at the start of the season a lot of people would have pegged you as a guy who's maybe in the 20s at NCAAs. Like, how'd you make that improvement? How'd you get it done today? Um, well, I just process oriented. I just did my training, kept my head down, and I executed on the day. I knew what I had to do, and that's really it. I just like, didn't pay any attention to, like, I didn't change anything about my process. It's just another race. I guess for any of you guys, I mean, why was today so much faster than races previous, like, especially here? That's how you does it, man. <laughs> we, 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 we've been training hard the whole year. Was, I've been tired. This is the only race I've felt I've not been tired. <laughs> we know when we need to be good at the, well, you know, the end of the season. And I would also right. say that, you know, we, we look – like we all trust Smith and Smith knows what's going to be best for the team and we all aren't right running for ourselves so when Smith says hey like we're going to make the race like this the race is going to be like this and it's going to be the best for the team nobody asked any question of those bats and I so when he said it was going to be faster we all just knew that it was going to be a grind and we were ready for it. Do you feel with two of 